So Washington is making it clear this hour the U.S. military will keep flying surveillance drone missions. The U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin says those flights will appear where international law allows. At the same time, the White House is looking to take a lot of the heat out of this moment. When you have a situation like this, uh, there, it does increase the risk of miscalculations, misunderstandings. Um, and the, the last thing that uh, we want, certainly the last thing that anybody should want, is for this war in Ukraine to escalate to become something uh, between the United States and Russia, uh, to have this actually you know, expand beyond that. National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby. Now, uh, Kirby adds that the White House is reviewing video of the confrontation from the drone. No word, though, on whether it'll be made public. For more on the story, we're joined by Scott Clancy. He's a retired Major General with the Canadian Armed Forces and the former Deputy Commander for the Alaskan NORAD region. He joins us from Coburg, Ontario. Scott, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, you heard John Kirby there. Uh, let's just get your off-the-top reaction. Uh, when you heard that the U.S. drone had been struck down, according to the uh, Americans, the Russians have a different story, but when you heard this incident happen, what did you think? I thought that uh, it's not surprising, as that we have seen a history of unsafe and reckless activities by the Russian military, its air forces, in the Black Sea, in the Baltic, and in Syria. We've even seen very provocative flying on the periphery of our countries, uh, United States and Canada, while I was up in Alaska or as the director of operations for NORAD. Okay, so what I'm reading into that is that these things do happen and that uh, you have to be careful when they do happen. And John Kirby talked about that, the idea of a misunderstanding. So, so uh, and this is against, of course, the backdrop of uh, Russia's uh, ongoing war on Ukraine. So, so does this incident feel any different to you? Do you see any greater potential for jeopardy in, in what has happened here? Absolutely. You know, when I was the director of operations for NORAD, it was one of our principal concerns that a intercept that either we were conducting in North America or that uh, U.S. UCOM, uh, European Command, which is the command that was controlling this dr drone in the Black Sea was going to have the same kind of altercation with Russian forces on the periphery. And, and this has happened. So this is different because the unsafe and reckless bar has been crossed. Uh, I mean, they've been conducting unsafe and reckless things in the past without having caused this type of accident. And you can just imagine this type of incident, which has occurred in the past with manned aircraft, can be extraordinarily disconcerting for escalation as well as for the safety of the crews involved. Okay, so those are the stakes. Let's talk about the mechanics. This is somewhere in the sea. Uh, is this something, and as we understand it, the Russians would uh, stand a much better chance of being able to uh, access this uh, than the Americans in able to, being able to retrieve it. Is there uh, material uh, that could be uh, of use to the, the Russians? What, exactly what would, would potentially unfold now? Well, I know that uh, based upon the Pentagon briefings that I heard this morning, the United States does not have any military vessels in the Black Sea right now. That means that it would have to be one of the U.S. allies that would be uh, going after this. And I think the Russians are in a position, much better position, especially to be able to retrieve anything if they could. And I, I think that, uh, you know, that drone is probably at the bottom of the Black Sea right now, and it'll be a difficult retrieval in the first place. On the topic of sensors and information on board, there is uh, rather sophisticated sensors on board that aircraft uh, as well as the cryptological links that would link it back through its satellite systems to its drone operators. And those would be of interest to Russia. The Americans, as I understand it, have argued that somehow if there was data that has been somehow wiped, is that something that you buy in terms of, uh, okay, it's going down, we're going to push delete? Uh, uh, or could there actually be material on there that, as you say, if the Russians can find it at the bottom of the sea, there might be uh, some uh, digital material they might find of interest? Uh, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not fully aware of that, but that would make complete sense. Zeroizing uh, cryptological equipment is a standard operating procedure on any aircraft if you're going down in occupied territory and that would be something that uh, the drones would be equipped with. 
So then what does the message that the send, or should I say, what is the, uh, are the directives that this would prompt to U.S. Uh, uh, military personnel in terms of going forward from here? Would there be advisories? Would they do anything differently as a result of what we've seen here? Well, I think that when I look through the briefings that were um, you know, given by the Pentagon, there's not much more that those drone crews could have done to avoid confrontation because the confrontation seems to be all on the part of the Russians. I think that, uh, you know, they're working on whether or not they're going to declassify some of the video from that. I, I, my suspicion is that they will, uh, and it will demonstrate, as, you know, has been proven in the past, that the Russians are being extraordinarily provocative and bridging into reckless and unsafe. What this means for the operators, though, is less important than what it means overall about the desire to control escalation in the Black Sea, but even anywhere on Russia's periphery. That brings me to my next and, and final question then. Uh, Scott, what are you going to be watching for with this as a sort of a backdrop? What are you watching for going forward on the, on the international scene? Well, there's lots of things. There's a, a huge Canadian nexus here. Uh, Canadian CF-18s have been periodically stationed in Romania, which is just miles from where uh, this incident took place and where they have intercepted Russian aircraft in international airspace and in Russian air, or in Romanian airspace on a continuous basis. NATO and Canada need to stand strong with the United States in that you know these kinds of provocative activities, wherever they occur, are an affront to you know peaceful operations and relationships between nations. Scott Clancy, I want to thank you for your time and your expertise on this subject. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. That was Scott Clancy, and he joined us from Coburg, Ontario.